Hello and welcome to Mtoto News Insight. My name is Omar Hamed. Teenage pregnancy cases have demanded national attention, especially after high numbers were recorded in some counties in 2018. As a country, there is need to find a solution to this. But is jail term a possible resolution? Anwam Boy with the report. Malini MP Aisha Jumwa has called for the arrest of teenage girls alongside their male counterparts who get reported by parents for impregnating minors. Speaking during the annual Malindi Education Celebrations at Barani Secondary School, Jumo asked the provincial administration and the police to have both the girl and the boy involved arrested and jailed. Statistics from the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, indicate that between June 2016 and July 2017, over 370,000 adolescents in Kenya aged between 10 and 19 years got pregnant, meaning that one in four girls is a mother before their 18th birthday. According to the county government of Kilifi, more than 3,000 cases of girls between the years of 15 and 19 were recorded between January and March 2019. In Kenya, there are about 28 correction facilities run by the Department of Children's Services. 10 are children rehabilitation schools, 12 remand homes, and 3 children's rescue center. Therefore, we do not have the capacity as a country to hold these numbers, considering that children cannot be put in the same cells as adults. In our own thoughts, this recommendation by Malindi MP will not be a solution to the problem at hand. Rather, what we can do as a country is invest in age-appropriate comprehensive sexual reproductive education, open discussions about contraceptives, and recognizing that we have a problem that needs immediate attention. We also require that the government and stakeholders to publicly address this issue and engage in forums intended to raise awareness. We do encourage parents to openly speak to their children in matters concerning sex and pregnancies to help girls and boys understand their bodies and the changes that come along during adolescent age. From Toto News, I am Anne Omboi. Nakuru County is set to build a 10 million shilling center for gender violence victims, which will be based at the Gilgil Sub-County Hospital. Nakuru alone reports a total of 4% of GBV and 8.3% nationally, according to the National Crime Research Center. Miriam Jomo reports. Domestic violence in Kenya reflects worldwide statistics in that women are overwhelming majority of victims. Over 40% of married women in Kenya have reported being victims of either domestic violence or sexual abuse. Why should a matter like this take years in court? We have survivors, we have families who continue to go to court. I think it's about time we put this matter that they must be heard within this less than six months so that it can be completed. The Nakuru County government will build a rescue center for gender violence victims targeting girls and women. This comes a week after the Center for Rights, Education and Awareness launches a gender-based violence policy in Meru County. This policy, we've not worked on it alone as an organization, but the grassroots women have played a very key role in uh, giving their inputs and contributing to issues that affect them in terms of gender-based violence. The center will be based at the Gilgil Sub-County Hospital and will cost 10 million shillings to build. County Chief Officer for Gender, Culture and Social Services, Tume Abduba, say that the center will be built in two phases. In the first phase, this financial year, the county government set aside 4 million shillings and in the second phase, the county will spend 6 million shillings. Um, this year alone, 2018, we have 651 cases reported, cases of gender-based violence, and this is only for one organization. Um, the last just concluded uh, national exams. We've seen um, a very um, 
big numbers of girls who were violated. Uh, with one county where we're working, for example, in Kilifi, we had 13,000 girls uh, who were who have who have been violated in, in teenage pregnancy, and and that is only one county. She announced that her department has also identified an institution in Joro Sub County which will be refurbished and turned into a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. She also said that the institution will be rehabilitated in the current financial year and will be up and running in the next couple of months. We have seen um, the magnitude of violence happening to women being more, um, and we can describe it in terms of uh, sexual violence. We can also be able to uh, define it in terms of um, um, emotional violence. Um, there is also a component of uh, economic violence. At the same time, she urged the owners of children's homes in the county to ensure the safety of those under their care, adding that it's so sad for these kids to be rescued only to be sodomized or defiled under their care. Ms. Abduba says that her department will intensify in from two inspections of the homes to establish how they are taking care of the rescued children. She said some of the homosexual cases being reported are as a result of child molestation, adding that she is concerned by the increasing number of gay people in the county and urge the homeowners and caretakers to teach the children under their care good morals. We want to empower women on their rights. If you understand your right today and you practice tomorrow your rights, then you are liberated. She commended the children's home, which have accepted to take the street children after the screening. County Director of Vocational Training, David Mwangi, announced that at least 43 street children have agreed to join the Vocational Training Center in Nakuru Town for various courses. Reporting from Toto News, I'm Miriam Jom. It is upon the society to protect its own from sex predators, preying on young teenage girls. It is our duty to report these offenders, and if we fail to do so, then the cases of child sexual abuse will still continue to escalate. Constance Ndeleko has the details. A family in Bungoma County, Mlatiwa village, is seeking justice for their 15-year-old teenager who delivered a baby after she was allegedly defiled by a police officer October last year. Nisalimia tuwa kijenda, kafika mwasu atisa. Ana nisalimia, anajenda, ikafikia mahali sasa, kakuja kinichukua, kinipaleka kwa kambi, tunalala na ya. Ikafika tena mwasu wakuma, kakuja kunichukua, kinipaleka kwa kambi yo saa moja. Nakuja saa mbili. Yo mwasu wakumi, nika muambia nimepata mimba yako. Haka sema tusito hii mimba, na usiambia mutu. Nini nijifungua? However, it has been difficult for the family to get justice for their child since the officer has been transferred to Taita Taveta County. Elsewhere, a Form 3 student alleged to have been raped by a chemistry teacher from Joma Kenyatta Girls High School at Bahati, Nakuru County. According to her, she says that the teacher invited her to his home and forced her to sleep with him. However, the head teacher denies any claim of the teacher being involved with the young girl. Around 10, after preps, and I was in the house, I I was in the house, I was of punishment. Na venye nilipita ukweli nilipata uwa mwalimu wa misimama hapo. So haka nipika hapo, alafu kwa kia ni hapo tuma ilikumi. Haka nipeleka mbaka kwa kia kulala ndio. Haka nza kunikaribia, haka niambia ti antaka to have sex. Mi nika muambia Mr. Ki. Haka niambia nilazima na nilazima. Ukikato ujua nita kufukuza inje. Na sitajali kenye ita kufanyikia na ujua niza kuhuata. The police officer states the report files have been sent to the DPP's office, Nudin Haji, for further investigation. Over the past years, school kids have been forced to wake up early to go to school, thus making them have few hours of rest, which can result to future complications. Dennis Njoroge has the report. This week, a picture of a school bus picking up children in the wee hours of the morning sparked hot debate with majority suggesting that our young children should not be exposed to such torture of waking up early. Last year, 
Former CES of Education Amina Mohamed noted that classes in all primary and secondary school, both public and private, were expected to run between 8 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. From 3.30 p.m. to 4.45 p.m. is set aside for games and club activities. For boarding students, they can use the period between 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. to carry out self-directed learning, while the period between 9.30 p.m. to 6 a.m. is prescribed for rest according to the Basic Education Regulation 2014. Any other period falling outside of those hours is illegal. The ministry vowed that action will be taken against schools which fail to operate in accordance with the stipulations. Parents have in recent times complained about children, including those in lower levels of primary school, being forced to wake up early to make it in time for morning classes that begin as early as 5 a.m. and being dropped late in the evening, with most of them having piles of homework, thus giving them few hours of rest, which is not recommended. According to research, many middle school and high school students have short sleep duration with only 30% of kids having enough sleep rest. Some of the disadvantages of lack of sleep include risk of heart diseases, poor balance, risk for diabetes, memory issues, trouble of concentration and mood changes. Many are urging the education department to enact a rule that will see the little ones going to school at considerable hours. From Total News, I'm Dennis Njoroge. That's all we had for you today, but for more information, on, you can catch us at our Mtoto News website at www.mtotonews.com and also at our social media platforms at Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My name is Omar Hamed.